Welcome to today's video, which covers exact equations. So as you can see from the objective at the top, so far we've covered separable and linear equations. Now we're gonna be taking a look at exact. Now, after this video, we're gonna be learning more ways to solve differential equations. So please don't just think that we're gonna do these three and we're done. There's more after this. Um, these are just the three that are covered in the first unit. So let's jump in. Let's consider the equation that you're given. First thing that I want you to notice is that this equation is separable. So we could solve it by separation if we wanted to. It's also what we call homogeneous. And we'll get to that eventually, but what matters is there's a zero. You don't need to know the homogeneous, just a fun fact for you. Okay, so taking a look at this equation, what I want you to notice is on the left side, like we saw in the last video, that is the derivative of the product of x and y. And so what we can do, like we did before, is we can integrate. So we get xy is equal to c, and that is our solution. Okay, another thing that I want you to recall. Let's say that u of z is equal to f of xy. dz, then is the partial of f with respect to x dx and the partial of f with respect to y dy. And we might have a zero here, which would make this zero. So that might be something that you're going to see. That leads us to this definition of a differential expression. So a differential expression, m of x, y dx, so function of x and y dx, function of x dy, is what we call an exact differential if it is the total differential of some function f of x, y. Therefore, a differential equation of the form m of x, y, dx plus n of x, y, dy equals zero is called an exact equation if the left side of the equation is an exact differential. So let's take a look at the first example and see what we're talking about. Is this expression exact? Well, the question is, can we come up with some f of x, y, such that the partial with respect to x gives us 6x, y, and the partial with respect to y gives us 3x squared? Well, yeah, if our function is 3x squared, y. Also might be written as z equals 3x squared, y. Then, if we take dz, that gives us 6x, y, dx, add 3x squared dy, which is the partial of f with respect to x dx, and the partial of f with respect to y dy. Okay, so then the question, of course, is going to be, why do we care? Why do we care if we have an exact differential equation or an exact uh, differential? So that leads us to this theorem. Let m of x, y, and n of x, y be continuous, and have continuous first order partials, in a region R where X is between A and B and Y is between C and D. Then this is a, equation is exact if and only if the partial of M with respect to Y is equal to the partial of N with respect to X. Okay, so let's look back at this example that we just did. This right here is our M. This right here is our N. So if we take the partial of m with respect to y, we get 6x. If we take the partial of n with respect to x, we get 6x. So from the very beginning, we could have confirmed that this was exact. We confirmed that the uh, differential was exact without having to find that function. So this should be reminding you of conservative vector fields, right, and finding potential functions. In the beginning, when we learned about conservative vector fields, the only way that we could prove that something was conservative is we would find the potential function. And then we got some shortcuts that were very similar to this. Okay, so where do we go from here then? Solving one of these exact equations is going to be very similar to finding a potential function. So let's take a look at this first example. Okay. Here's how you should think through this. So keep in mind, on your test or moving forward, you're going to have to be able to identify what type of equation is this. So you are going to go through your head and you're going to want to know, is this separable? This one is. Is it linear? So we could solve by separation. It also is linear as well. But we're now going to want to talk about, is it exact? 
and solve it uh, using an R, a new method. Okay, so this first function is m, the second function is n, so I'm going to take the partial of m with respect to y. What I remember if it's dx, I want to find the partial with respect to y instead. So that gives me 9x squared. Then, if I have dy, I'm going to want the partial of n with respect to x. So I get 9x squared. So that tells us that yes, this solution is exact. Okay, so our solution, like we saw from the very beginning, is going to be of the form f of xy is equal to c. So similar to a potential function, we know that this is the first partial of f with respect to x. So we're going to want to integrate. So our f of xy then is going to be 3x cubed y plus some function of y. Right? Because if we integrate with respect to x, our constant could be a function of y. Now, one note. I decided to integrate with respect to x first. I could have done y first. Okay, so then if you remember from finding a potential function, we're going to take the partial of this with respect to y, and we're going to get 3x cubed add g prime of y. We also know the partial with respect to y, though, is this 3x cubed plus 1. So we get 3x cubed plus 1 is equal to 3x cubed add g prime of y. So our 1, then, is g prime of y. So our g of y, then, is just y plus c. So finally, our solution, then. Our solution, remember, is of the form f of x, y is equal to c. So we have this term, and then we have this term that we found. So we're going to get 3x cubed y. Add y is equal to c. You do not need c on both sides. So this c right here, if you imagine that being on the left side, we have a constant on the right, so you're just moving it over. Okay, so what we're going to take a look at next is what happens if we have an equation that is not quite exact. This is going to lead us to something called an integrating factor. So similar to linear differential equations, occasionally it's possible to take an equation and make it exact by multiplying by an integrating factor. So for example, this equation that we see right here, if it just says solve. Okay, so the first thing, again, you're going to ask yourself is, is this separable? No, it's not. Is this linear? No, it's not, because it has that y squared. Is it exact? Well, if we take the partial with respect to y, we get negative 2y. If we take the partial with respect to x, we get 2x plus y. So no, it's not. So at this point, we wouldn't know how to solve this. Now, what will be done in your homework or in your packet or other examples that we do is you'll be given an integrating factor. So I'm going to give it to you that the integrating factor is 1x squared over y. So like in a linear equation, you're going to multiply by that. Multiplying both sides of the equation by this factor would give us negative y squared over x squared y dx add x squared add xy over x squared y dy is equal to zero. I'm going to simplify that to make it just look a little bit uh, neater. It gives me negative y over x squared dx add 1 over y plus 1 over x dy is equal to 0. Okay, so now this should be exact, but let's still check. So is this exact now? Well, the partial of the first one with respect to y is negative 1 over x squared. The partial of the second factor with respect to x is negative 1 over x squared. So yes, it is. Now we can solve the same way we did before looking for what we would call, um, or be similar to, a potential function. So I know first partial with respect to x is negative y over x squared dx. So I integrate. So my f of xy then is y over x 
add some function of y. So now if, now if I take the partial with respect to y, I get 1 over x add g prime of y. We know this needs to be our partial with respect to y. So we get 1 over y add 1 over x is equal to 1 over x add g prime of y. So 1 over y is our g prime of y. If we integrate then, our g of y is going to be equal to natural log of y plus c. But then remember, we don't need that plus c in our solution. So our final solution is going to comprise, be comprised of this and then the term we just found. So our solution is y over x add natural log of y is equal to c. Okay, this is the end of the required portion of the video. So at this point, if you think you are good to go, then you can be done watching. There is an ex extra example on the next page that reviews uh, a little bit of trig integrating and takes a look at an initial condition. So if you want to stay with me, that's great. And let's take a look at the next page. For this last example, you might want to try it on your own. So if you're up for it, maybe pause and see if you can get this one started. Uh, if you don't feel up to doing that, then let's just jump right in. So starting the same way we did before, is this separable? Well, no, it's not. Is it linear? No, it's not. There's a y squared. Is it exact? Well, a little hard to tell because of the way that it's written, so I'm going to rewrite. If I cross multiply, I'm going to have uh, y1 minus x squared dy equals xy squared subtract cosine of x sine of x dx. Okay, so this term I'm going to subtract and move to the left side. When I do, it's going to reverse the order of those first two terms, right, because I'm subtracting. Uh, not dx, dy. Okay, so now we are at a point where we can decide if this is exact or not. So the partial with respect to y is negative 2xy. The partial with respect to x is negative 2xy. So yes, it is. Okay, so let's get ready to solve. Again, you can start with either one of these. It doesn't matter. I'm going to start with the partial of f with respect to y, which is that y times 1 minus x squared dy. If I integrate then, I'm going to get f of xy is equal to 1 half y squared 1 minus x squared plus some function of x. So now I'm going to differentiate with respect to x this time. And when I do, I'm going to get negative x y squared plus g prime of x. I already know what that needs to be equal to. So that needs to be equal to cosine x sine x subtract x y squared. So my g prime of x then is cosine x sine x. Okay, how do we feel about integrating that? Hopefully okay. If you make your u sine of x, your du then is cosine of x dx. So our g of x then is 1 half sine squared x. So our solution contains this expression and this expression. So our solution is 1 half y squared, 1 subtract x squared, add 1 half sine squared x equals c. I don't really like that those 1 halves though, so if I multiply by 2, I can also write 1 minus x squared, or y squared, 1 minus x squared, add sine squared of x equals c. I'm going to denote these c1 and c2 so that, since they're not the same. Okay, we still have an initial condition, though, that we have to deal with, so let's do that real quick. y of 0 is equal to 2, so I get 4 multiplied by 1 subtract 0, add 0 is equal to c2, so c2 is equal to 4. So finally, our solution is y squared 
1 subtract x squared, add sine squared of x equals 4. Until next time, thank you for watching.